Good day everyone. For this presentation, we will talk about Marvin Zuckerman's sensation seeking. Let me tell you first the histories of how sensation seeking came to its existence. According to Professor Kelland, who conducted the research about Zuckerman last year, 2020, he first became interested in psychology when he encountered a book about graphology. And then, when he suffered depression, he discovered the work of Freud. So he decided to become a psychoanalyst. And then after serving in the army following the World War II, he attended the New York University to pursue medical degree. But unfortunately, a bad grade in chemistry made it impossible for him to get into his choice. And then, Zuckerman found it difficult to find an area of psychology that can capture his interest. Also, found clinical work unfulfilling, so he began to focus on conducting research. So after studying, he spent a few years at a psychiatric research institute in Indiana where he began studying sensory deprivation. So he first studied about sensory deprivation and then when he when he joined the faculty of Delaware, University of Delaware and in 1968, he found it difficult to na maghanap ng magkukontinue ng funding para sa research niya ng sensory deprivation kaya he began to focus on sensory seeking itself. So he began to research and study about sensation seeking but actually when he entered the New York University mas interesado siya sa explanatory drive or also called curiosity wherein yung curiosity meron tayong desire to know or meron tayong interest sa mga bagong experiences okay so that was the history of sensation seeking now let us go to the next slide so what is sensation seeking so sensation seeking as defined by zuckerman in 2007 it is the need for varied, novel, complex, and intense sensation experiences and the willingness to take physical, social, legal, and financial risks for the sake of such experiences. Sensation seeking is a personality trait defined by the degree to which an individual seeks novel and highly stimulating activities and experiences. So sensation seeking is a desire to experience um, experience something na magte ka talaga ng risk. Okay, next. So, paano ba natin malalaman na yung isang tao is, or paano ba natin measure na yung tao is high in sensation seeking? So, next slide is assessing sensation seeking. To measure sensation seeking, Zuckerman constructed the sensation seeking scale or the SSS 40 item paper and pencil questionnaire. So, people who are high in sensation seeking are attracted to the unknown and as a result, cons consistently seek the new, varied, and unpredictable. So, yung mga tao na high or is may is scored high, mayroong high score in sensation seeking, sila yung mga tao na attracted sa mga bagong experiences, sa mga unpredictable experiences. And the next is... The current version of the self-report measure include the four subscales: thrill and adventure seeking, experience seeking, disinhibition, and boredom susceptibility. These are the four components of sensation seeking: thrill and adventure seeking, experience seeking, disinhibition, and boredom susceptibility. We're in para malaman natin yung para maassess natin yung measure ng sensation seeking ng isang tao, ito yung gagamitin natin sa 40 item test. Ito yung laman niya. Okay, the first component is thrill and adventure seeking. So, a desire to engage in physical activities involving speed, danger, novelty, and defiance of gravity. The pursuit of physical activities that exciting, unusual, and potentially dangerous. So, in thrill and adventure seeking, dito nagsisik yung isang tao ng adventure ng thrill. Ito yung for example bungee jumping, scuba diving, and parachuting. Wherein dito nag sila into physical activities. Okay, the next component is 
experience seeking. So, the search for novel experiences through travel, music, art, art or a nonconformist lifestyle with similarly inclined people. Nonconformist is a person who refuses to follow to establish social orders or to fulfill the expectation placed by the society. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga tao na nag nagsisik ng experience, um, kasama nila yung mga tao na ay nakiki-inclined sila sa mga tao na non-conformist were in non-conformist sila yung mga tao na hindi binabahal am um, pinagsasawalang bahala nila yung yung established na na expectation ng society ibig sabihin mamumuhay sila kung ano yung base sa kanila yung standard para sa kanila and then next is it is a degree to which one seeks excitement through the mind such as form of music art and travel nga so, dito naman ay experience seeking, um, nagsisik na experiences through new ay, new sensory experiences yung sinisik nila or mental experiences. Okay, so yung mga tao na, na nagsisik for experience, um, sila yung mga tao na nagsisik ng mga ng something new activities. For example, nagjo-join ng mga dance team, yung mga yung mga sumasali sa mga challenges o kaya mga marathon. Okay, the next slide is disinhibition. So, the need to seek release in uninhibited social activities such as risky sex, impulsiveness, aggressiveness, and antisocial behavior. Disinhibition is similar to impulsivity or lack of self-control. It, it represents a tendency to act without regard of consequences. So, yung may mataas na score sa SSS, SSS or Sensation Seeking Skill, sa subscale, sa subscale na disinhibition, sila yung mga tao na impulsive at saka lack of self-control. Yung mga tao, isipa, alam naman natin yung mga impulsive is, hindi muna nila inaalam yung consequences ng mga gagawin nila bago nila iya kung anong gusto nilang gawin. And then, nagsisik sila ng sensation through social stimulation. For example, um, drinking and sex. Okay, next is boredom susceptibility. An aversion to repetitive experiences, routine work, and unpredictable people, and a reaction of restless discontent when exposed to such situation, when exposed to repetition. Avoiding monotonous, repetitive, and boring situations, people, and activities. Okay, so yung, yung mga tao na my high, high score in boredom susceptibility ayaw nila ng repetition ayaw nilang nare-repeat yung mga routine nila for example um, naulit yung kinakain nila sa uh, pang araw-araw o kaya naman yung routine nila sa trabaho so let us recap about the components of sensation seeking so number or una is thrill and adventure seeking subscale so yung merong high score sa thrill and adventure seeking na subscales um, nagsisik sila ng nag sensations through physical activities sa experience seeking naman through new experiences and sa disinhibition naman nagsisik sila ng um, sensation through social activities and boredom susceptibility naman through new routines okay so next slide is good and bad sensation seeking Zuckerman later noted a distinction between so-called good and bad sensation seeking. So, what are the difference between the two? The good type is non-impulsive socialized sensation seeking. Meaning, meaning yung involved dito is um, thrill and adventure seeking wherein um, nakikipag-participate in social activities yung um, person with um, high-end thrill and adventure seeking scores and then sa my bad type naman which is impulsive and unsocialized sensation seeking ang involved naman dito is high scores person with high scores on the disinhibition experience seeking and boredom susceptibility we're in we're, we're in ano Yeah, okay, so aside from the sensation-seeking skill na dinevelop ni Mar Marvin Zuckerman, meron ding ibang mga psychologists na nagdevelop ng skills for assessing, psych for assessing 
sensation seeking. Um, for example, yung sa German psychologist, he published Need Inventory of Sensation Seeking, which is both in German and English languages. And then, sa mga research na napakita na mas mas reliable pa daw yung yung scale na need for inventory of sensation seeking kaysa sa original na sensation seeking scale ni Marvin Zuckerman. Another is from China, the brief sensation seeking skills, which was proven that it is reliable and valid in that culture for predicting reckless behavior in motorcycle riding, excessive use of alcohol and, cig and cigarette, and risky sexual behavior. Okay, now let's proceed to the characteristics of sensation seeking. So the first characteristic is age differences. Zuckerman found that differences in sensation seeking occur at a very young age. Ito yung findings sa study na ginawa sa second grade school children in United States wherein yung mga, yung mga bata na, na merong high score in sensation seeking, they prefer to watch scary movies. And then, whereas yung mga bata naman na na merong low score in sensation seeking, they, they prefer to watch funny movies. Concerning age differences, Zuckerman postulated that sensation seeking is related to developmental phases. Younger people are more inclined to seek adventure and novel experiences and to take risks than older people. So it is suggested that sensation seeking pits peaks between 16 and 19 years olds. And then according to Mansa research Nina Lynn Lansman, Graeber and others, when they administered the test fra ranging from adolescents to 60 years old, the test is called the test is course showed that sensation seeking begins in middle school years and then nagde decrease na siya kapag nag nakatong nag 20 na yung isang tao. And then wala namang nakita na significant significant differences sa function of educational level kasi yung college students hindi naman sila nakapag ay hindi sila naka-score ng high or low score compare sa mga um, hindi nakapag-attend ng college. Okay, so next is experiences. The research results on the effect of age on sensation seeking were confirmed by Zuckerman's own life experiences. So, yung kaninang research na ginawa sa age differences in sensation seeking, kinonfirm siya ni Marvin Zuckerman through his own life experiences. He said that when he was a college student, he reached his full sensation seeking potential through drinking, sex, and hitchhiking around the country. He wrote this at the age of 74. And then Zuckerman reports that he continues to seek new experiences, but they are less likely, but they are less physically adventurous than we, when he was younger. So meaning, as as a person grow older, um, nag naglelesen na yung naglelesen na yung pagsisik niya ng mga adventurous adventurous activities that requires physical. Next is gender differences. Significant gender differences were found also in four components of sensation seeking. According to the researches um, conducted in diverse countries, United States and Iran, wherein men consistently scored higher, higher in sensation seeking and impulse control than women. Many scored higher on thrill and adventure seeking, disinhibition, and boredom susceptibility. Women scored higher on sensation seeking. Similar to sa results then obtained from subjects in United States, England, Scotland, Japan, and Thailand. Okay, next characteristic is racial and cultural differences. Researchers found significant racial and cultural differences in SSS scores. Whereas Asians have lower scores on SSS than people in Western countries, and white subjects, the man, scored higher in sensation seeking compared that compared to non-whites. So meaning, yung mga nakatira sa Western countries that are 
that are white people, they have high, high scores in sensation-seeking skills compared sa mga tao, compared sa mga Asians and non-white people. So let's proceed. Next is behavioral differences between high and low sensation seekers. Physical risk-taking behavior has been related to sensation-seeking. So, yung mga tao na engage sa activities such as skydiving, firefighting, riot police officer, bungee jumping, and race car drivers, meron silang high score on SSS, SSS or sensation-seeking skill compared sa mga tao na hindi nag engage sa mga activities kagaya ng mga nabanggit. So, a so, study of American Motor motocross driver, drivers found that yung mga most experienced drivers, meron silang highest scores on sen sensation seeking compare sa mga hindi masyadong experience. So, another is yung research naman sa mga male undergrad, male college undergraduates in Israel found that high sensation seekers were most likely to participate in risky sports and to volunteer in military combat, combat units compared sa mga merong low sensation seekers. So, ibig sabihin yung mga, yung mga merong high sensation seeking, um, mas nag engage sila sa mga physical activities or risky sport activities. Oh, okay, so next is different types of risk taking. Researchers has identified three types of risk takers. First is antisocial risk takers, for example, drug addicts and criminals. Adventure risk takers, such as mountain climbers and sky diver, divers. These two, itong dalawa na to, nagpakita sila ng significantly higher SSS scores compared sa pro-social risk takers. So, ano nga ba yung pro-social risk takers? So, pro-social risk takers such as police officers and fire firefighters, meron silang motives that are related to the factors other than thrill and adventure seeking. Wherein itong motives na to is, they intended to help or benefit another individual or group of individual. So, high sensation seekers also appear to more willingly to relocate to unfamiliar surroundings from familiar surroundings and to travel to exotic places even if the journey involves physical hazards. So, ibig sabihin, itong tatlong types ng risk takers na to, um, the more na high, yung high sensation seekers ka, the more na willing ka na um, willing ka na mag-take ng risk or willing ka na willing ka sa mga physical hazards involved sa activities. So next is drugs, drinking, crime, fast cars and online poker. High sensation seekers are more t more likely to use and sell illicit drugs, drink alcoholic beverages, to shoplift and to commit delinquent behavior at an early age compared sa mga merong low sensation seekers. The subjects in these studies included blacks in the United States, un university students in South Africa, high school students and adults in United States, and teens in Norway. And then high sensation seekers were more likely to smoke, use alcohol and drugs, drive fast, have more car accidents and convictions for reckless or drunk drive, driving and engage in frequent sex than low sensation seekers. It is from the study of, from studies of American high school and college students. Research in Spain and in France confirmed the link between high sensation seeking and speeding and drunk driving. Online poker players in France tended to score higher, higher in sensation-seeking and to experience strong feelings of arousal while doing so than those who did not play online poker. So, yung merong high, high sensation-seeking, they are, they are the one who are engaged 
in such activities, drugs, drinking, crime, fast cars, and online poker were in. They experienced strong feelings of arousal while doing this kind of activities than sa mga merong low sensation seeking. Risky sexual behaviors. Those who scored on a measure of sexual sensation seeking reported to have greater sexual risk taking behaviors than who scored low. They engage in sexual intercourse without contraceptives. This is the findings in the study of young black women in United States. Also, in Zuckerman's research, 16% of high sensation seekers reportedly homosexual encounters, while 7% of low sensation seekers. Among college men, high sensation seekers scores correlated positively with risky sexual behavior, which the men knew they could expose them to AIDS. These findings were confirmed by research on older subjects. The correlation between sens sensation seeking scores and risky sexual behavior among gay men, both blacks and whites, was so strong that the research concluded that high sensation seeking males constitute a high risk group of AIDS. So, ibig sabihin yung high score in risky sexual behaviors, they, they intend to engage in sexual activities without, um, without contraceptives and knowing na pwede silang mahawaan ng AIDS. Okay, so there are several other ways kung saan nakikita natin yung difference ng behaviors between high sensation seek seekers and low sensation seekers. Kung paano nga ba nagkakaiba yung behaviors nila. And included dito yung um, cheating, color choices, and tattoos. Wherein, high sensation seekers are more likely to cross a street on foot again ar against a red light. This is the findings in studies in Israel. They show a preference for so-called hot colors such as red and orange, rather than pastels such as light blue. Also, high sensation seekers had tattoos and body piercings than low sensation seekers, according to according to the according to the study of young people in Germany conducted by Hinz. Bray Chiller and others in 2006. Also, high sensation seekers were more likely to cheat on academic tests than, who, than those who scored low. This is from the American College Students um, research. I researched about the American College Students conducted by DeAndrea Carpenter and others. Okay, so ang behavioral differences dito sa cheating, color choices, and tattoos between high sensation seekers and low sensation seekers, um, yung mga high sensation seekers, mas prefer nila na mag-cheat sa exam compared sa mga low sensation seekers. Mag -prefer, mas prefer nila na magpa-piercing, magpa-tattoo compared sa mga, sa mga may low sensation seekers. And then, mas prefer nila yung color choices na um, mas preferred nila yung um, so-called hot color choices. For example, nga yung red and orange and orange compare nga sa pastel colors or light colors. Okay, next is the computer use. We're in sa China daw, high school and college students in China who scored high in sensation seeking were more likely to become obsessed with computer games and internet. And then, researchers on workers in the United States showed that High sensation seekers frequently use their workplace workplace computers for personal reasons such as sending emails, playing computer games, and viewing websites with sexual contents. So, dito naman sa computer use, yung behavioral differences naman daw ng low sensation seeking and high sensation seeking is yung mga high sensation seekers is mas nag engage sila sa paggamit ng computer wherein um, nagiging ano na sila, addicted na sila sa paggamit ng computer. Um, nagiging obsessed na sila. We're in, nga dito nga sa may research on workers in United States, um, ginagamit nila sa personal reasons yung paggamit ng computer nila sa workplace. But, 
research with American college students did not support such relationship. Ibig sabihin yung ginawang research sa mga American college students, hindi niya sinuportahan yung sinasabi dito sa computer use. Job preference. So, ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng behavior between um, high sensation seekers and low sensation seekers when it comes to job preference? Okay. A study of 233 low-level employees in the United States found that high sensation seekers scored lower on job performance than low sensation seekers. High sensation seekers were also less likely to establish a social relationship at their place of employment to, or try to obtain information from co-workers or supervisors. And then this research or this, the researchers also suggested that itong lower level jobs might not be might not be suitable para sa mga high sensation seekers um hindi siya sufficient para sa stimulating for high sensation seeking okay so before we continue let us recap first about the behavioral differences between high and low sensation seekers first is physical risk taking where in yung mga merong high or, or yung mga high sensation seekers is um nag nag engage sila into physical activities which requires um, taking risks and then anti-social risk takers naman and adventurous risk takers naman for example sa anti-social risk taker is drug addicts and criminals and then adventurous risk takers naman is mountain climbers and skydiving skydivers wherein this also requires um, risk taking and this is um, behavior behavior of um, high sensation seekers and then drugs drinking crime fast cars and online pokers were in mga high sensations high sensation seekers um, must nagi intend sila na mag engage into these activities compare sa mga merong um, compare sa mga low sensation seekers next is risky sexual behaviors um, risky sexual behaviors naman um, um, high sensation seekers intend to engage in sexual intercourse without nga contracep contra contraceptives um, and then knowing that pwede silang makakuha ng sakit next naman is cheating, color choices and tattoos um, high sensation seekers um, prefer to cheat in, a in academic exam um, tatawid sila kahit may red light because they prefer hot color, um, hot colors such as, for example, orange and red, and they they intend to have tattoos and and piercing. Next is computer use. Yung perong high sensation seekers or high sensation seekers is they intend to use computer more. Ibig sabihin, um, they they are being obsessed in computer, in internet. And then, next is job preference. So, in job preference nga, yung mga, yung mga high sensation seekers is mas prefer nila na yung trabaho nila is nag, nag, nag take sila ng risk. For example, police officers, firefighters, compare naman sa low sensation seekers. Marvin Zuckerman also correlated sensation seeking in other factors such as personality differences, cognitive processes, occupational differences, attitudes, and hereditary versus environment. First is the personality differences. Zuckerman and other researchers correlated sensation seeking sensation seeking scores with a number of distinct personality factors. Isa nga dito yung kay I think factor of extroversion wherein they found that SSS scores, particularly on this inhibition, is related to it. As a result, Zuckerman suggested that high, high sensation seeking seekers are egocentrally extrover extroverted, meaning concerned lang sila sa, sa ibang tao because um, concerned sila sa ibang tao as, they, as their audience or as a source of stimulation. And then, High sensation seeking scores also correlated posi positively with extraversion as described by Carl Jung and measured by the Mears Bridge 
type indicator. However, investigations of sensation seeking and neuroticism showed no correlation. Ibig sabihin, um, there is no correlation between um, sensation seeking and neuroticism. But Zuckerman suggested that SSS scores did not point to abnormal or neurotic behavior, but neurosis such as phobias and obsessive compulsiveness. And ito ang mga neurosis na to is um, they might be related to low sensation seeking because of phobias and um, um, obsessive compulsive nga is um, hindi masyadong nag-open up yung mga tao na um, may low low sensation seeking. And then, research on college students and adults and adults in Netherlands um, found that high sensation seekers also scored high on on the personality factors of openness and experience. Ibig sabihin that high sensation seekers also um, connected to the personality factors of openness to experience. High score High scorers also openly express their emotions. They are assertive in relating to others, non-conforming, and confirmed risk takers. And then, high scores on SSS were, pos were also positively correlated with the openness experiences. So the next factor is cognitive processes. Correlations between sensation seeking and intelligence test scores are generally positive but not high. It has it has also been found that high sensation seekers did not earn better grades in school. Zuckerman suggested that because high sensation seekers were more involved in active recreational pursuits, they used less time for study. For example, yung mga athletes sa school. nag excel sila sa, for example, basketball, volleyball, but... Um, when it comes to academic, when it comes academically naman, um, hindi sila masyadong active or um, mas prefer nila yung mga sports kesa sa academic. And then, high, high SSS scorers seem to be attracted to speculative, bazaar, or even pseudo-scientific ideas, but um, they do not always express it in their schoolwork. Also, um, they tend to engage in Sigmund Freud called primary, prim, primary process thought. Um, they, have, they may have images, dreams, and daydreams so vivid that the distinction blur between this internal simile and the real world. Ibig sabihin, itong mga nakikita nilang images, dreams, and daydreams is so parang sobrang linaw na parang makatotohanan na siya. So, parang nabablur niya yung... Um, yung um, panaginip or yung hindi makatotohanan sa totoong mundo. Zuckerman suggested that because high sensation seekers continually search for novel experiences, if they cannot find them in external situations, they may look inward and create fantasy world. So yung mga high sensation seekers nga is kailangan nila ng greater need of stimulate stimulation. So, okay, so they may have images, dreams, and daydreams so vivid that the distinction bursts between this internal stimuli and the real world. Ibig sabihin yung mga sensation seekers, they have images, dreams, daydreams na napakalinaw. Na parang kapag iisipin is parang siyang totoong nangyayari but it is not. And then Zuckerman suggested that because high sensation seekers continually search for novel experiences, if they have, if they cannot find them in external situations, they may look inward and create a fantasy world. Okay, so yung mga high sensation seekers nga is um, nagsisik sila for greater need, ay, meron silang greater need of stimulation. So kapag hindi nasatisfy yun ng external world, um, yung internal world nila yung magsasatisfy nila, for example, yung imaginations nila. So, another factor is occupational preferences. High sensation seekers have a greater need for stimulating and varied experiences, so they tend to choose different jobs than low sensation seekers. 
The Coder Occupational Interest Survey um, showed significant differences between high and low sensation seekers, wherein high sensation seekers scale scores um, correlated positive with scientific interest. Ibig sabihin yung mga merong high SSS scores, meron silang ano, scientific interest, whereas um, negative naman sila, negative naman yung ex interest nila when it comes to clerical interest. Sa ano naman sa strong interest inventory skills naman, um, pinakita naman dito yung uh, when it comes to men, inter it shows interest in the helping professionals. So in strong interest inventory, when it comes to men, um, mayroong interest siya with helping professionals such as psycho psychologist, physician, psychiatrist, social worker, and minister. There, there is course correlated negatively with business sectors, jobs such as accountant, purchasing agent, and banker. Women with high score with SSS scores have high interest test scores for profession of lawyer and low interest test scores for elementary school teachers. And then high sensation seekers for both sexes who were interested in the helping professionals express a preference of preference for risky cutting edge jobs such as crisis intervention intervention work or para paramedic duty on emergency responses teams. So when it comes to occupational preferences, yung may mga ay yung mga high in sensation seek, seeking um sila yung must prefer yung helping professionals, must prefer yung um, emergency response team kesa sa low um, sensation seeking. So next factor is attitudes. High sensation seekers tend to be more liberal in their political and religious attitudes than low sensation seekers. Those with high SSS scores express more pessimistic attitudes towards sexual behavior. Also, high scorers are more likely to express aesthetic views rather than belief in any conventional religions. Whereas, low sensation seekers naman, sila yung more likely, more likely na frequent na church goers. They scored high on measures of Authoritarianism, a personality styles typically characterized by rigid opinions and prejudiced attitudes. Low sensation seekers has also show a low tolerance for ambiguity. They believe that ambigu ambiguous ideas and situations are threats rather than challenges. When it comes to attitudes naman, um, High sensation seekers are more open about their political and religious stance kumpara sa low sensation seekers. Whereas yung mga low sensation seekers is mas conservative sila, um, mas focus sila sa opinion nila and hindi sila masyadong open sa mga new experiences or new challenges because yung mga new challenges is um, they treat it as a um, threat, ganun. Parang para sa kanila nakakasama yun. So, the last factor is hereditary versus environment. A large amount of research consistently shows a strong hereditary basis for the sensation-seeking personality factor. A study of ISYNC suggested that 58% of this trait could be accounted for by genetic factors. A twin study conducted jointly by Zuckerman and Sibyl, Sibyl I think, found an even greater genetic component. So, ibig sabihin yung, yung kinandak nila na twin study, meron silang findings na merong great um, genetic component yung um, study nila, yung kinandak nila na study. 
Zuckerman also recognized the, recognized the influence of other situational environmental factors such as parental sensation seeking, whereas low, low sensation seeking parents may be um, overly fearful, protective, and inhibiting of their children, provid forbidding them to engage in adventurous behaviors. So yung um, parents na may low sensation seeking, sila yung um, natatakot para sa mga anak nila. Sila yung overprotective and hindi nila masyadong pinapayagan yung um, mga anak nila na mag-engage sa mga adventurous activities. Sa mga high sensation seeking parents naman, sila, yung, sila naman yung parents na nag encourage and nag-reinforce sa mga um, anak nila to engage in unusual activities and nagpo-provide din sila ng environment um, para mas ma promote or para mas mahasa yung sensation seeking skill behavior ng mga anak nila. Also, ongoing research suggests that other environmental factors in childhood and adolescence that may affect the level of sensation seeking. A study of teenagers in Sweden found that those who scored in impulsivity and sensation seeking and who attended more privileged schools committed fewer crimes than those who equally high levels of sensation seeking and, and impulsivity who went to less privileged schools. So yung study about sa teenagers in Sweden is um, pareho silang parehong parehong ano high in um, sensa sensation seeking but um, mas fewer mas few yung crime na um, committed na nakukumit ng mga um, galing sa privileged schools compared sa less pri privileged schools and then it has also been found that children who were raised in orphanage or other types of institutionalized care um, na merong high sensation seeking are less likely na um, makisali sa mga gulo kesa sa mga um, brought up in private homes na high din in sensation seeking meaning um, yung mga bata na or yung mga person na yung mga individuals na lumaki sa orphanage or institutional care and then yung mga lumaki sa private homes yung mga kasama yung mga parents nila parehas yung pareho silang high in sensation seeking but um, mas nag engage yung mga batang pinalaki sa private homes o yung mga batang pinalaki na magulang nila into um, into sa mga gulo sa mga troubles and then scores on the SSS in the early studies supported the area about the area that firstborn and only borns, both boys and girls, were higher in sensation seeking than later borns. Kasi daw, mas nabibigyan ng stimulation and attention daw yung mga firstborns and the only borns on their early age. But, um, later, later research conducted in, in England um, failed to find any correlation between birth order and sensation seeking. Ibig sabihin daw yung um, yung research na kinandak sa England um, hindi niya napatunayan or na-fail siya na maghanap ng correlation between birth order and sensation seeking. So, ibig sabihin walang kinalaman yung birth order kung mataas o mababa yung sensation seeking ng isang tao. Okay, so bago natin tapusin yung itong discussion about um, Marvin Zuckerman sensation seeking um, let me tell you let me tell you first about the highlights okay people who score high in sensation seeking tend to um, score high in adventure seeking disinhibition and susceptibility to boredom and yung high sensation seekers they live in a westernized cultures they take risks, do drugs and alcohol, drive fast, and engage in frequent sex. Be extroverted, open to new experiences, constitutious and emotional. Be interested in helping professionals, such as psychologists or social workers, rather than business. 
Also, high sensation seekers have really liberal political and religious views and then be the only be the only child or the firstborn child in the family have more body piercings and tattoos so those are the um, highlights of um, sensation seeking of uh, those are the highlights of research on Zuckerman's ideas okay so that was the discussions about Marvin Zuckerman's sensation seeking thank you for listening